Hi guys. Now before moving into the descriptions of the NFR or how to do or how to evaluate the NFRs, let us take an example of any organizational architecture and then we will go step by step and then we will have a look that how to really derive those NFRs. Okay, so that will help you to understand that while you were as an architect as a project manager as a developer as a application architect solution architect when you are evaluating the nfs how easy it will be in the later stage so this is just an uh, example case study where you can just have a look and then you can relate all, some of the nfs what we will be discussing in this course and later it will be easy for you to keep in mind okay so as an example i've taken a uh, uh, any insurance user which is an insurance company you can relate with the aviation you can relate with oil and gas you can relate with banking you can relate with any other industries of your choice now say if they are working as an enterprise any enterprise so this enterprise i have considered as an insurance company which is having uh, in the experience layer when i say experience layer it is the ui layer where they are having a certain amount of application or the business applications which is uh, taking care of certain things they have a crm they have a core insurance where they are uh, doing all the uh, back-end insurance uh, work in this particular section and they have certain integration channel platform HR and lot of things okay now when as an enterprise architect solution architect when you are assessing after assessment you will be reaching to a point where you will be able to generate the target architecture now when you will be able to generate this target architecture when you know that what are the business goals what are the drivers for which they want the change now if you are doing a greenfield project for a new company then you are starting from scratch where you will be taking uh, uh, from the uh, foundational architecture then you will go to the uh, industry related architecture or a specific common architecture and later you will be deriving uh, uh, I will say the organization specific architecture when you are going from this to the target architecture but in a nutshell what I am trying to say here is when you look in any architecture and when you are deriving uh, to find out the non-functional requirement uh, you have to take it from the very very beginning now how that can happen say for example let me move to the target architecture part of it now after looking up to the baseline this is a business architecture baseline where in the baseline after looking at this you have come to a conclusion where you will be building this target architecture now how will you do this as an enterprise you have different kind of architecture you can follow a clean architecture you can follow an agile way of doing things or agile architecture or you can do a waterfall method uh, implementation of certain architecture but uh, you can follow in an enterprise level you can start following togaf you can start following jackman or any kind of ontology or any kind of framework to reach from the baseline to the target architecture right now to do that you will be following certain amount of steps as an example i will say let us consider in this particular case we are doing uh, following a toga framework now when i say toga everybody when you are following an enterprise architecture you will be going through certain steps now as an example how to have does this we will take that as an example and then we will start understanding that at what level we will start looking into the nfrs now what togaf says togaf says uh, you start in the preliminary any any project whatever project it can be one single project or it can be hundreds of project which you are starting from the preliminary phase now when you are starting that in the preliminary phase uh, you know that where you want to reach from the baseline to the target now you start here you have an architecture vision then in the phase b you are doing a business architecture then you are going to information architecture where you are breaking it into data architecture application architecture and all those right and then you are going to technology architecture later you are starting to find out the opportunity and solutions it is a two gap way of uh, saying things and then you start uh, finding out the migration planning means how you will be uh, 
uh, implementing what you have found out in B, C and D and then you start the migration planning then you will uh, uh, make a roadmap how the governance will be there and then there will be an architecture change management right and if you see in the middle there is a requirement management section where the requirements are getting in every level you can see the maps are uh, bi-directionals in every phase of the architecture similarly the non-functional architecture comes in every phase so as an input from this phase to this phase when you are going to business architecture you may get some input as a requirement or functional requirement similarly you should start taking the non-functional requirement in every phase of your project so if you are doing a business architecture while you are mapping this business you need to understand what are the non-functional requirement the business architecture is expecting to do and then you take that input into the phase c now when you take that in the phase c what you are going to do here you are going to make sure that you are addressing any of the non-functional requirements in phase c as well similarly once you start i mean when i say phase c in this particular case when i'm saying about togaf it is following the data architecture and the application architecture so then you start moving from phase c to d once you start moving from phase c to d you are going to technology architecture. what is the technology architecture it is again the data and the application architecture you have mapped you taking some non-functional requirement then you are going to the technology architecture where you are actually uh, putting things into the infrastructure that's why it is a technology architecture in the technology architecture you start putting things and then you start implementation so in every phase what i am saying is you need to uh, make sure that you are following the non-functional architecture input and then start applying the functional along with the non-functional or you start documenting if the business is not providing you have to prove the business that these are going to impact your system in the larger scale once you prove that you are in a better shape so you can uh, be able to uh, prove the business that if you miss this then you are going to suffer in the later stage right so taking that let us move to the next one now when i say all this while you are implementing the target architecture following certain architectural patterns we are not going in deep of the togaf or any other architecture framework because our objective here is the non-functional requirements but how to implement the non-functional uh, uh, nfs or the non-functional requirements is what we are targeting here in this course so let's uh, understand that these non-functional requirements can be again classified into process consideration product consideration or the external consideration i will show you some of the diagrams or the architectural uh, diagrams and take uh, and uh, evaluate that how we can really reach and understand how we can uh, find out uh, the nfrs from uh, each and every block of it okay so you need to remember the influencer on the system qualities okay so any process product or external consideration has to be uh, keep in uh, keep in mind while you are going or addressing the non-functional or writing down the non-functional requirements okay now the process considerations are what the development method the implementation environment the decision tracing the design choices are the process consideration what are the product consideration the integration the performance capacity security integrity this is the product consideration so you can see that in the middle of this section right and the external consideration are the social factors economic factors the contract factors and political factor there can be many many uh, in the list but these are the certain things if you just keep these things in mind then you start thinking about the system qualities right so you know how you are going as an architect as an uh, uh, influencer of that particular system how you are going to influence your on the system qualities are these three categories you can start from the process you can look into the product you can st then start looking into the external consideration but these are the key things you need to remember okay let's move to the next section 